Spinosaurus, the main predator of prehistoric Africa. Spinosaurus is considered the largest, although not the most dangerous, land-based predator that has ever lived on the planet. This lizard was larger not only to the Tyrannosaurus rex, but also the Gigantosaurus. Like these of his relatives, Spinosaurus was a theropod, that is, it belonged to a bipedal predatory dinosaur. But few of the known dinosaurs were lucky enough to change their appearance so often during their study. For more than 100 years since the discovery of this species, scientists have changed their opinion about its appearance and its habits at least five times. To learn more about scientific discoveries and other periods of the development of our planet, we advise you to subscribe to our channel. Our subscribers are the first to know about the release of new videos and can express their opinion about them in the comments under the video. And if you want to help the creators of the channel in its promotion, you can do so by liking the video. The first finds of Spinosaurus remains date back to the early 20th century. The German paleontologist Ernst Stromer, during his expeditions to the north of the African continent, found two skeletons of a dinosaur species unknown at that time. But the skeletons he found were not completely preserved. Therefore, the first images of Spinosaurus were very different from those offered by modern researchers. Since the most complete of the two skeletons found was in Egypt, the names of those species appeared to be linked to this country. The name Spinosaurus itself comes from the Greek words meaning spine and lizard. The species found by Stromer are officially named Egyptian and Moroccan. But the second Spinosaurus survived only in fragments, therefore some scientists questioned this classification. It was precisely because of this lack of information that the first image of the Spinosaurus rather resembled one of the pinnipeds or cetaceans. Instead of the usual dorsal crest, a huge fat hump was drawn. Instead of the front paws, flippers. There are no hind legs in the picture at all, and the tail is more like a fish. The mouth of the Spinosaurus was made closest to modern images, but instead of a narrow long muzzle, the paleontologist suggested that this animal had a small trunk. In general, the first portrait of the Spinosaurus a giant toothy elephant seal appeared before us. Fortunately, scientists quickly abandoned this variant of the appearance of the Spinosaurus. But despite being depicted as a theropod since 1915, it still looked more like a giant predatory kangaroo with a crest on its back. From the fat hump, not typical for predators, the discoverer of this species himself refused. But in some later reconstructions, scientists return to similar options. Almost until the end of the 20th century, the image of the 1915 model was considered correct. True, the illustrators of some books about dinosaurs depicted him walking on four legs. Scientists understood that Spinosaurus is a highly specialized predator. Only fact that they could not correctly determine his specialization. But in 1986, another dinosaur from the Spinosaurid family, Baryonyx, was discovered in England. First, in 1983, a single large claw was discovered, and after three years, scientists dug up a skeleton that was preserved by about 70%. A few years later, the undoubted relationship between Spinosaurus and Baryonyx was recognized and scientists suggest that animals similar in structure should have the same habits. There was practically no doubt about the specialization of Baryonyx. The structure of its head and jaws indicated that it was a fish-eating dinosaur. And only in the late 90s did the image of the Spinosaurus appear to the known general public from films from Steven Spielberg. Such a transformation of appearance became possible due to the emergence of new specimens. At this time, several well-preserved skeletons were discovered in North Africa. Exhibits from private collections were also purchased. True, many fans of dinosaurs did not really approve of the scene from the next Jurassic Park, in which the Spinosaurus defeats the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
Anyone who is at least a little versed in the issue, it was clear that such an outcome of the fight was very unlikely. Unlike the T-Rex, the Spinosaurus is not adapted to fight other dinosaurs. Of course, its larger size, as well as its impressive teeth and claws, were serious weapons. But all of that was intended for hunting fish and other aquatic animals. But in these films, the Spinosaurus appeared already in the form of large theropods. It has a standard body structure for all representatives of this class, large hind and short front legs. It is distinguished only by the presence of a dorsal ridge and a narrow crocodile muzzle. The latest images of Spinosaurus so far endowed it with a flatter and longer tail, similar to the tails of modern newts. With such a structure and length of the tail, its gait should have been different from the gait of the same Tyrannosaurus rex. Scientists suggest that when moving onto land, the back and head of the lizard were located more horizontally, almost parallel to the ground. According to various sources, Spinosaurus could reach a length of 12 to 18 meters and weigh from 7 to 20 tons. The largest of the found skulls of this monster has a length of 2.5 meters. The teeth of the Spinosaurus strongly resemble those of modern fish-eating crocodiles. They are not serrated, as for example in the T-Rex, and they are bent backwards. The purpose of the dorsal sail is not fully known. There are suggestions that it was used for thermoregulation or attraction of the opposite sex. In addition to the lizards, which gave the name to the entire family of Spinosaurids, it includes several more species of dinosaurs. All of them have been studied to varying degrees, but their similarity and kinship do not cause any doubts among scientists. Let's get to know some of the dinosaurs from the Spinosaurid family. Baryonyx We have already spoken about the discovery of this lizard, which lived in the Northern Territory of England at the end of the Cretaceous period. The found skeleton with 70 centimeter claws belonged to an incomplete adult. Therefore, we don't know anything about the real size of the representatives of this species. The main difference of baryonyx are considered to be a straight rather than an S-shaped neck and equally long claws in the front and hind limbs, as well as an elongated mouth, in which 96 large teeth are located. The front paws of this pangolin are quite long. Therefore, despite the obvious use of only hind legs for walking, he could sometimes stand on all four limbs. The structure of the jaws and teeth say that Baryonyx ate fish. Most likely, his method of fishing resembled that used by modern bears. But at least some semblance of a dorsal sail was not found in this relative of the Spinosaurus. Cristatosaurus This dinosaur had a crest on its back. It may not be as prominent of that of the Spinosaurus, but it was he who gave the name to the species. Cristatosaurus translates to crested lizard. He lived in the early Cretaceous period on the African continent. The only find of the remains of this species dates back to 1973. The skeleton of the Cristatosaurus was discovered during excavations of the state of Niger. Due to the lack of other finds, some scientists believe that this dinosaur should not be singled out as a separate species. Zuhomim it is to this species that some scientists tend to attribute the remains discovered in 1973 in Niger. Zahoman lived in territory in the modern Sahara Desert about 110 million years ago. At that time, it was quite a swampy area. This lizard ate mainly fish. The samples found allow us to say that their body length was more than 10 meters and their weight was slightly less than 5 tons. Irritator this dinosaur lived at the same time, but on a different continent. The only skeleton was found in Brazil. The reconstruction of the remains made it possible to determine that this dinosaur had a body length of 8 meters. He was distinguished by an unusual crest at the back of his skull. Oxalia This dinosaur is considered the largest of the theropods found in Brazil. In 1999, scientists found the first specimen here and in 2004, it was supplemented by an incomplete upper jaw. Based on these remains, the alleged appearance of the lizard was restored. It is believed that it had a length of 12 to 14 meters 
and weighed about seven tons. Terrible birds and other dangerous birds of prey of the prehistoric world. After the disappearance of the dinosaurs from the face of the earth, which ruled the planet for many millions of years, many evolutionary niches were vacated, which began to be occupied by representatives of other species. Including the place of the most important and largest predators became vacant. It is extremely interesting that this niche was occupied by the closest descendants of giant lizards, birds. True, in order to become the most dangerous creatures on the planet, these birds began to imitate the recently extinct theropods in many ways. They grew to enormous sizes and lost the ability to fly. We're talking, of course, about the so-called terrible birds, or Foracos. From this video, you'll learn how these birds of prey began to dominate other animals and how their descendants live now. If you like the videos that appear on the Dinosaur Age channel and you want to be the first to know about their release, then we advise you to subscribe to our channel. We also encourage our viewers to actively share their impressions in the comments and express their opinion with the help of likes. The most dangerous predators of the late Cretaceous period were undoubtedly large representatives of theropods. These dinosaurs were often large and walked on two legs. A typical representative of this family was the most famous of the dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus rex. He, like other representatives of theropods, had powerful hind limbs, and these dinosaurs practically did not use the almost atrophied front legs. It is no longer a secret that most of them were covered in feathers, and if it were not for the huge mouth studded with sharp teeth, outwardly they could well resemble strongly grown-up modern birds. And some theropods of the late Cretaceous period already had a completely normal beak. But due to the fall of the giant meteorite that caused the end of the dinosaur era, we were never able to find out what the further evolution of these monsters could have led to. Birds, on the other hand, simply copied the theropod hunting style and developed the same tools that had been proven over the years of evolution. One such bird-like dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period was the Gigantoraptor, discovered in China in 2005. On the set of a documentary film about dinosaurs, the scattered remains of a young individual were accidentally discovered. After a study of which scientists recognized this dinosaur as a representative of a separate previously unexplored species. Despite the fact that its name translates as giant predator, the discovered new species was an omnivore. Based on the remains found, it was possible to restore the size of this individual. The Gigantoraptor, which died at the age of 11, was 8 meters long and weighed about 2 tons. From the discovered incomplete lower jaw, calculate the dimensions of the skull of this giant. Its length was about half of a meter. Gigantoraptor had toothless flat jaws. Scientists suggest that they passed into a horny beak. The forelimbs of the Gigantoraptor were elongated and possibly ended in claws brushed with the thumb set aside. There is no direct evidence that these dinosaurs were covered in feathers, but since they were close relatives of the Oviraptors, this option is quite acceptable. Approximately 20 million years ago, the place of large predators was taken by a terrible bird, Fororacos. Traces of 18 species of this family have been found all over the planet so far. These were large, flightless birds up to 3 meters tall and weighing up to 300 kilograms. They were the most common in South America, but after the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, predatory mammals moved to the continent and, most likely, Ferraricos could not stand the competition with more adapted competitors. The main weapon of the Ferraricos was a powerful large beak. With the help of quick and accurate blows of this beak, the bird killed its prey and then ate it, cutting it into small pieces. Most scientists are of the opinion that these birds of prey fed mainly on small animals such as rodents or snakes. Scientists have divided all currently known Ferraricos into five subfamilies. They differ in size, location, and time of residence, 
but all these birds are united by the fact that they were predators and could not fly and use a powerful beak as their main weapon. Despite the assumption that the Ferraricos could live on all continents, the facts say that these birds dominated the animal world of South America and partly lived in North America. There is no scientific confirmation of their presence in Africa or Eurasia, but similar remains officially found there have not been assigned to this family. Among the many species of Ferraricos were the most diverse birds. The largest representative of the family is considered to be the Titanus valeri. These giants reached a height of 2.5 meters and weighed more than 200 kilograms. Titanus was a rare member of the family that was able to compete with large cats and other predatory mammals in the vastness of North America. It is believed that he was a good runner and used the ambush method of hunting to hunt larger mammals such as horses or bison. 15 million years ago, on the territory of modern Argentina, another giant representative of the Ferraricos family, Kalinken, lived. This bird grew up to 3 meters and weighed up to 275 kilograms. The length of the Kalinken skull was about 70 centimeters and the beak reached 45 centimeters. Scientists believe that these predators were distinguished by high running speed and could pursue their prey by hitting it with their powerful beaks. There is also an opinion that the Kalinken, like other large Ferraricos, could drive away smaller predators from prey using their impressive dimensions. Brontaurus can be called the heaviest of the Ferraricos. Its name translates as Thunderbird. And this heavyweight lived in Argentina about 11 to 17 million years ago. With a height of 2.8 meters, he could reach a weight of under 400 kilograms. At the same time, it is believed that Brontornis could run fast and pursue their prey for a long time. One of the few representatives of the Ferroricos family that lived in Europe was Eleutherornis. Representatives of this subfamily did not differ in large sizes and, perhaps, therefore, they could live quietly next to large predatory mammals. The growth of these birds of prey ranged from 70 to 100 centimeters. They simply did not take away their main prey from large felines and cave bears. Eleutherornis lived about 41 to 43 million years ago in the territory now occupied by Switzerland and France. Previously, all Ferraricos were attributed to the family of cranes. But now, they, together with their modern descendants, are singled out in a separate family of Cariomaforms. It is by the habits of the Cariyama which gave the name to the family. The scientists largely determine how its giant ancestors behaved. The crested Cariyama lives in South America, successfully hunting small animals and snakes. With the height of about 1 meter, it weighs only 1.5 kilograms. Cariams fly very badly, but they can run at speeds of up to 30 kilometers per hour and jump to a height of up to 2 meters without the help of wings. Remarkable enough is their way of hunting poisonous snakes. These birds are not resistant to snake venom, and in a fight with a deadly enemy, they can only hope for their speed and mobility. They easily evade snake attacks and use their powerful claws. It is possible that the weapon of the Ferraricos was not only a beak. Most often, the crested Kariyama emerges victorious from a dangerous fight. Death by snake bite is a rarity among these fearless birds. Of course, Kariyama now cannot compete on equal footing with mammals of prey, but she has found her ecological niche in this world and successfully exists in the neighborhood with both predatory mammals and flying birds. In the same way, her distant ancestors, the Ferraricos, fought for a place in the sun, competing with more fit rivals for several million years. The History and Origin of the Gorgonopsids the fauna of the Permian geological period was distinguished by a wide variety of species. And if it were not for the dramatic change in the planetary climate which led to the most massive extinction in the history of our planet, then most likely the animals that inhabit the Earth now would look very different. 
It is especially interesting how the development of predatory mammals would have gone. After all, by the end of the Permian period, nature had already created a predator that had many features that helped later animals climb to the top of the food chain. It is possible that the descendants of animals from the Gorgonopsid family would now occupy these places, and the appearance of dinosaurs, saber-toothed tigers, and perhaps people would be out of the question. Viewers who subscribe to our channel will be the first to know about the releases of new videos and get opportunities to comment on them. And if you want to help out the creators of the channel in this promotion, then you can do this with the help of likes. Representatives of the Gorgonopsid family were the perfect predators of their time. They were distributed throughout the supercontinent of Pangaea. The remains of creatures belonging to this suborder are found mainly in Africa. But there are also finds in Europe, Siberia, and both American continents. Now, scientists can say with confidence that they were different creatures belonging to related species. It is also clear that they occupied a niche of large land predators, although some of them could well lead to semi-aquatic lifestyles. The first Gorgonopsid was described in 1876 by Richard Owen, who discovered an incomplete skull of a previously unstudied species in South Africa. It was then that these therapsids got their name. Literally, it could be translated as the face of the Gorgon, but the Greek word Gorgos can also be translated as terrible, and the appearance of these animals is consistent with that name. These predators reached a length of about 2.5 to 4.5 meters and may have hunted in packs. But their most impressive feature was the structure of the jaws and teeth. Nature created the first saber-toothed predators hundreds of millions of years before the appearance of Smilodons, Meherods, and other large cats of the Ice Age. Gorgonopsids became these predators. Gorgonopsids possessed impressive, backward curled fangs from the upper jaw. The smaller fangs of the lower jaw were positioned in such a way to leave room for the upper ones when biting, and the small pre-canine teeth of the upper jaw allowed the lower fangs to tightly close shut. Even if the beast could not immediately bite through the skin of the victim or accurately direct the blow, then such a natural castle still captured a piece of the victim's skin. Another important weapon of the Gorgonopsids was special jaws. Their jaw joint was double and movably articulated. This design allowed the mouth to be opened as wide as possible for powerful bites. Very few skeletons of these animals have been found. Therefore, it is quite difficult to accurately judge the structure of their body and some habits. It can be reliably stated that they had a powerful short neck, a developed shoulder girdle, and strong front legs. With their help, the predator could knock down and start tearing at its prey. The very setting of the forelimbs is more similar to the structure of the bodies of lizards than mammals. But in smaller members of the order, the front legs were more shifted under the body than in the largest known Gorgonopsids. The hind limbs of all known species of these animals were also located under the body and not on the sides of it. This position of the hind legs helps to push off better. This suggests that the Gorgonopsids must have jumped well, but they could hardly run fast. Their legs were much shorter than those of the modern predatory animals, which with we compare them to. True, for its time, the length of the paws was just enough to catch up with any animal of the Permian period. The feet and hands of these animals had a primitive structure. This should have affected both the speed of running and the efficiency of jumps. It was simply impossible for them to push off the ground well. It is also likely that Gorgonopsids could run long distances. A lack of the diaphragm did not allow them to breathe normally during such races. Disputes about the structure of the Gorgonopsid skin have been going on since the discovery of the first finds of the remains. Most scientists agree that they were warm-blooded animals, so it is quite possible that they were covered in fur. But 
the option with scales, like a lizard, is quite the case. The Gorgonopsid family includes two subfamilies, Enostrancebia and the Rubitide. At the moment, only one type of Enostrancebia is known for sure. It was he who gave the name of the subfamily. Enostrancebia are considered the largest representatives of the Gorgonopsid suborder. According to some reports, they could reach a length of more than four meters. They were discovered during the excavations of the Arkhangelsk region and named after the famous Russian geologist Alexander Enostrantsev. At the end of the 19th century, two complete skeletons and several more poorly preserved specimens were discovered there. Presumably, they were representatives of the same species, but belonging to different age groups. But there is an opinion that among these finds, there are remains of another Gorgonopsid, named Orthodoxy, in honor to the paleontologist Pravoslavlev. The largest of the found skeletons has a length of 3.5 meters. The length of his skull is 60 centimeters. Enostrancevia had a slender body on short legs. They also had elongated wedge-shaped heads. They presumably lived in swamps and woodlands around 252 to 265 million years ago. The subfamily Rubicides includes several more primitive animals undoubtedly related to Enostrancebia. Gorgonopsid, the animals that gave the name to the entire suborder, lived in South Africa about 254 to 259 million years ago. It is believed that they lived along the banks of rivers and in semi-desert areas. The estimated length of the Gorgonopsids was 3 to 3.5 meters. The length of their skull could reach 35 centimeters. The skull itself was massive and flatter than that of the Enostrancebia. At the moment, five species of these animals have been found. Rubigaya the genus of the Gorgonopsid is currently represented by three described species. Presumably, there is another separate species, but it is impossible that the remains found belong to one of the already described animals. These Gorgonopsids lived in the forests on the territory of modern South Africa at the end of the Permian period. These were large animals, over three meters long. Depending on the species, the skull of the rubage could reach from 30 to 50 centimeters. Clelandina. This genus includes three species of Gorgonopsids that lived on the territory of the African continent. They lived in semi-deserts and hunted animals with thick, durable skin. This evidence by the presence of powerful jaws. But there is an option that these Gorgonopsids did not disdain carrion. Most likely, these were not the largest animals of their time. The largest of the found skulls do not exceed a length of 35 centimeters. Psychosaurus. The remains of these small animal lizards were found in Tanzania and South Africa. Scientists suggest that their maximum size did not exceed 2.5 meters. The first described skeleton was 1.2 meters long and had a skull 25 centimeters long. Samples found in Tanzania could reach 2 to 2.5 meters. Eleronanthus, one of the most numerous genera of Gorgonopsists known to science at the moment. At least eight reliably described species lived in the forests of South and East Africa during the Permian period. They were distinguished by rounded, laterally compressed skulls with high temporal fenestrae. In the process of their development, Gorgonopsids could become more advanced animals, but at the end of the Permian period, a dramatic climate change occurred, which led to the most massive extinction of species in the history of the Earth. The cause of this extinction, scientists say, increased volcanic activity in Siberia the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere had increased, and within a short period of time, by geological standards, the Gorgonopsids ceased to exist. All the mechanisms that these animal lizards began to develop, nature recreated in other animals. This means that if the fauna of the Permian period did not disappear then, 
now the descendants of the Gorgonopsids could become the most advanced predators in the history of the planet. Top 10 Largest and Most Dangerous Theropods of the Dinosaur Age Among all representatives of the dinosaur age, theropods stand out as the most recognizable and widespread group of lizards. Among the representatives of this type of dinosaurs, there are a wide variety of species from the smallest and unknown to the rulers of the animal world of their time. It is about the latter that we will talk in more detail today. Subscribers of our channel have the opportunity to comment on the videos they watch, expressing their opinions about the topics we are considering. Also, by subscribing to the Dinosaur Age channel, you will be the first to know about the releases of new videos. And if you want to help promote this video by platform search algorithms, then you can do so by liking it. Theropods are lizard dinosaurs. They are considered the most developed group of prehistoric pangolins from an evolutionary point of view and the ancestors of modern birds. Their name can be translated as animal-footed. The theropods were named so for their three-toed clawed paws reminiscent of the paws of modern animals. Among the representatives of this group, there were not only predators, but also herbivorous lizards. But throughout all periods of the dinosaur era, there were species that dominated and terrified other animals. We present you the top largest and most dangerous theropods. Cacarodontosaurus Literally, the name of this dinosaur, which lived in the Cretaceous period about 100 million years ago, is translated as lizard with shark teeth. The first descriptions of Carcharodontosaurus were made from a pair of teeth found in the 1920s in Algeria. Later, many more remains of this large theropod were discovered in North Africa. Based on these findings, scientists concluded that these lizards could reach to a length of up to 12.8 meters and a height of 4 meters. The skull with 20 centimeter serrated teeth had a length of up to 1.6 meters. In its structure, the Carcharodontosaurus is very similar to the Gigantosaurus and Allosaurus. Therefore, scientists, as new data appeared, either singled it out into a separate family or ranked it as one of these families. It is also likely that the Allosaurus could have been an ancestor. Seraphidogonex According to the scattered remains found in the United States in the early 30s of the 20th century, scientists restored the approximate dimensions of this lizard. This new species of dinosaurs had a body length of up to 13 meters and a height of up to 4. Seraphinogonex weighed up to about 4.5 tons. Some researchers even attributed it to a particularly large species of allosaurs. Scientists have now discovered and examined the scattered remains of four poorly preserved animals. It is reliably known that they lived about 150 to 155 million years ago on the territory of the Northern American continent. Mapusaurus The length of the largest of the discovered skeletons of Mapusaurus is just under 11 meters and the height is about 4 meters. But many scientists say that these theropods could reach much larger sizes. Mapusaurus lived on the territory of modern Argentina approximately 93 to 99 million years ago. This area at the time was covered with sparse forests and grassy plains. In such conditions, it is easier to get food as part of a well-coordinated hunting group. The remains of Mapusaurus found together just confirm this assumption for scientists. Therefore, despite their smaller size compared to some other theropods, they could well prey on such large representatives of the dinosaur era as Argentinosaurs. Deltadromius The remains of this large but rather light theropod were discovered in Egypt and Morocco at the beginning of the last century. Moreover, some of the bones were described as the remains of different species. With a height of 2.5 meters 
and a body length of 8 to 13 meters, their weight did not exceed 2 tons. The Deltadramas lived at the same time and in the same territory as Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. Therefore, they had to solve the issue of competition by choosing different prey and developing their own methods of hunting. Deltadramias became an active predator and presumably preyed on young herbivorous dinosaurs. To do this, he acquired fast and powerful hind legs as well as a developed shoulder girdle. There is practically no reliable information about the structure of the skull of this predatory theropod. At the moment, researchers only have samples of a few teeth. Carnotaurus In 1984, an expedition organized by the National Geographic Society of Argentina discovered an almost completely preserved skeleton of a new large theropod. This species was called Carnotaurus, which means carnivorous bull. This name was given to the dinosaur for the bony outgrowths on its head, similar to horns. Recent studies have shown that the length of the Carnotaurus is unlikely to exceed 8 meters and growth 2.7 meters. This theropod weighed about 2 tons. Carnotaurus lived in the woodlands of the Cretaceous period, about 70 to 72 million years ago. Allosaurus This large lizard dinosaur, discovered in the United States in the second half of the 19th century, was the first species to be classified as a theropod. This discovery provoked a wide interest in the scientific community in the subsequent excavations in Colorado and Wyoming. Here, over several decades of excavations, many bones of dinosaurs of various types have been discovered. The Allosaurus itself, whose name can be translated as another lizard, lived in the Jurassic period about 155 to 155 million years ago. It was a real giant, up to 4 meters tall and up to 10, possibly 13 meters long. The Allosaurus weighed no more than 2.5 tons with its impressive size. Tarbosaurus Theropods reigned not only in Europe, Africa, and America. On the territory of modern China and Mongolia in the late Cretaceous period, about 70 million years ago, such a lizard lived as the Tarbosaurus. It could reach 12 meters in length and weighed up to 5 tons. It was discovered by a joint Soviet-Mongolian expedition in the late 40s of the 20th century. The largest known Tarbosaurus skull measures 1.3 meters in size. This Asian theropod is second only to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Gigantosaurus In the late 80s of the last century, a fragment of the lower jaw with several preserved teeth was discovered in Argentina. This fragment was larger than similar bones of many known theropods and was described as the remains of a yet unknown species. A few years later, a well-preserved tibia was found, and with a radius of 10 meters from it, other samples were found. Based on the collective bones, scientists have restored the appearance of a dinosaur called the Giant Southern Lizard. Initial assumptions spoke of the length of its skull at 1.8 to 1.95 meters. But it later turned out that the skull of the Gigantosaurus did not exceed 1.6 meters and the total body length averaged more than 12.5 meters. The weight of the Gigantosaurus was about 7 to 8 tons and the growth was up to 4 meters. These monsters lived in South America about 100 million years ago. Spinosaurus Spinosaurus is the largest predator in the history of the Earth. At the same time, its parameters, appearance, and habits have remained a mystery over the past 100 years. During the study of the species, various versions on this score have been put forward many times. This fish-eating dinosaur lived in North Africa 95 to 110 million years ago. Its length was almost 15 meters and its height was 6 meters. Spinosaurus weighed from 5 to 7.5 tons. Its main distinguishing features are an elongated, crocodile-like mouth and a crest on its back. 
On the purpose and appearance of this crest, disputes among the scientists have not subsided so far. Tyrannosaurus Rex And our rating of the largest and most terrible predators is completed not only by the most famous theropod, but also by the most popular species among all dinosaurs. It was the T-Rex that was assigned the role of the main monster in many Hollywood films and cartoons about dinosaurs. By the way, he deserved this role. Recent studies say that Tyrannosaurs could grow up to 13 meters in length and weigh up to 9 tons. It was probably the most dangerous predator of the Cretaceous period, which lived in North America and probably Eastern Siberia. Scientists have not fully decided how the T-Rex hunted after all, but one thing is for sure, those whom he attacked had practically no chance of salvation. His main weapons were powerful jaws, which, thanks to a short neck and strong muscles, were able to bite through any bones and leave monstrous wounds. Perhaps if the dinosaurs didn't disappear over time, such large predators would cease to exist. But we can safely say that the evolution of the ancestors of modern birds could have gone completely wrong. And now, perhaps, the descendants of large predatory theropods would still be ruling the Earth. We are all used to believing that the era of the dinosaurs was a time when giant lizards reigned supreme on our planet. Dinosaurs ruled the land. Pterosaurs were masters of the sky and ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs terrified the inhabitants of the underwater world. But in fact, most of the dinosaurs did not have most impressive sizes, and nature created enough animals that were a danger to the dinosaurs, including quite large ones. And that is exactly what we will be discussing in today's video. So, your attention is presented to the top 5 animals of the dinosaur era that ate these dinosaurs. Bilzebufo Opening our list is the largest frog ever created by nature. These giant amphibians by modern standards lived on the island of Madagascar about 66 to 70 million years ago. The length of the Bilzebufo could reach 25 centimeters. Of course, for adult dinosaurs, such predators were not dangerous, but for their cubs, these carnivorous frogs could pose a serious danger. In one of the documentary series about the era of dinosaurs, there is even an episode in which two such frogs eat a pair of Majungasaurus cubs. In addition to its huge size, nature endowed the Bilzebufo with an unusual protective device for amphibians they had a serious bone shell. This armor completely covered the skull of the animal, passed to the neck, and protected the spine. Scientists believe that this could protect the frog from attacks by crocodiles and dinosaurs. Bilzebufo also had the bite of great strength. Studies conducted in 2017 showed that the bite of this frog is more than two times stronger than a human bite. Combined with sharp teeth, this enabled the Bilzebufo to successfully hunt the smaller animals of its time. By subscribing to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, you will be the first to know about new videos and share your opinions with other users in the comments. Also, to promote our channel, we urge everyone who is interested in it to like this video. Sinea in 2010, the remains of a snake that lived at the end of the Cretaceous period were discovered in India. She was in her nest, curled up around her clutch of eggs. A skeleton of a sauropod baby was found nearby. Scientists have suggested that this previously unknown species of snake fed on small dinosaurs. The snake was named Sinea, which means ancient mouth. This name is quite symbolic. After all, Sinea, unlike modern pythons and boas, could not open its mouth so wide. The reason for this was the lack of movable articulating jaw joints. Therefore, the discovered snake was not able to swallow prey that exceeded the size of its head. 
and these sizes were quite not the largest. The skull of the largest specimen found did not exceed 10 centimeters. At the same time, the dimensions of the snake itself were comparable to the dimensions of some large lizards. Scientists suggest that the length of the Cinea was about 3.5 meters. Repenemums As it turns out, not only reptiles could pose a danger to dinosaurs. Among the ancestors of modern mammals, animals that ate prehistoric penguins were also found. Approximately 130 million years ago, at least two species of the animal of the genus Repenemum lived on the territory of modern China. Scientists have discovered at least one skeleton inside which the remains of a young Cytocostosaurus were found. One of the species of the Repenemum bears the name giant, but in fact, its total length did not exceed one meter, and its weight less than 15 kilograms. Among the mammals of that time, there may have been larger animals, but almost nothing is known about them. So, the giant Repenemum can be considered the largest predatory mammal of the dinosaur era. It was larger than the feathered dinosaurs found in the same area. The second type of Repenemums known to science did not grow more than 50 centimeters and weighed an average of about 5 kilograms. The name of this animal can be translated as crawling mammal. Judging by the structure of his body, the Repenemum lived up to its name. Its short legs were set wide apart from the body, and the feet were small and not adapted for running. It is believed that Repenemum did not hunt dinosaurs, but ate carrion. Kulazuk It is possible that this amphibian is a creature more ancient than dinosaurs. Her ancestors could survive the Permian extinction and continue their usual existence, and the new inhabitants of the planet became another addition to her diet. The remains of a Kulazuk had been found in Dinosaur Bay in Australia. Presumably, they lived here in the period from 137 to 112 million years ago. At this time, the current Australian continent was located beyond the Antarctic Circle. The average annual temperature and the places of the residence of the Kulazuk was approximately 10 degrees Celsius. The change of polar day and polar night lasted for half a year. It is quite possible that under such living conditions, the Kulazuk, like modern amphibians, fell into an anabiosis during the cold season. It is unlikely that nature, at the time, created another way for amphibians to survive when water bodies freeze and the temperatures drop. The presence of the root Zook in the name of the animal suggests its resemblance to a crocodile. But we can rather talk about the same way of life, the way of hunting and eating, than about external signs. Of course, with the aquatic lifestyle of both animals, it is quite difficult to avoid such a comparison. Even in the most famous popular science series, Walking with Dinosaurs, the Kulazuk is shown as an alternative to modern crocodiles. But unlike crocodiles, Kulazuk could hardly feel comfortable on land. His short legs were completely unsuitable for walking, and even more so for running. Scientists suggest that Kulazuk preferred to ambush, grabbing passing fish, crustaceans, and small dinosaurs. For this method of hunting, nature equipped this amphibian with a wide mouth in which more than a hundred sharp teeth could be located. The length of these conical teeth could reach 10 centimeters. The monster itself could grow up to 5 meters in length. The length of its head was about 50 centimeters. With a mass of about half a ton, the Kulazuk was one of the largest amphibians in the entire history of the Earth. Sarcosuchus This crocodilomorph was found in a large number of documentaries and feature films about the era of dinosaurs. He is also a character in computer games of a similar theme. Of course, for the creators of these works, they cannot but insert them into the largest crocodile in the history of the planet. But, in fact, Sarcosuchus is not even a distant relative of modern crocodiles, alligators, or gharials. Sarcosuchus lived in North Africa and Brazil approximately 93 to 120 million years ago. Therefore, their battles with Spinosaurus and Carcodontosaurus shown in the popular science series 
are a figment of our imagination. These dinosaurs appeared on Earth after the extinction of Sarcosuchus. Although with its gigantic size and lifestyle, the Sarcosuchus could no doubt eat even large lizards that lived with it at the same time. The first finds of skeletons of the giant crocodilomorph were made between 1946 and 1957 by the French explorer Albert de la Pen. This paleontologist undertook several expeditions to Mali, Algeria, and Tunisia. During excavations, fragments of skeletons of new species were found. They were mostly teeth and fragments of the skull. According to them, the alleged appearance and size of the animal was restored. In 1977, two well-preserved teeth were found in Brazil, which later became the basis for describing a new species of Sarcosuchus. Previously, it was assumed that this giant crocodile could reach a length of 11 meters, but recent studies have shown that their maximum size did not exceed 9 meters and their weight was 3.5 tons. These dimensions allowed the Sarcosuchus to be one of the most dangerous predators of the dinosaur era. In the mass consciousness, the Tyrannosaurus rex undoubtedly holds the palm among the predatory dinosaurs. But many will be able to name the Carnosaurus, Spinosaurus, Tarbosaurus among the most bloodthirsty land monsters of the dinosaur era. These lizards have become for people the personification of vicious predators thanks to pop culture. It is they who are often chosen for the role of negative cartoon characters and Hollywood blockbusters. But today, we want to tell you more about the dinosaur less known in wide circles, which was no less dangerous and bloodthirsty. The issue will focus on the Carcodontosaurus and their closest living relatives. We recommend subscribing to our channel and be the first to know about the appearance of next videos. Then you'll be able to get acquainted with the new material about the evolution of various creatures that lived in different eras of the development of our planet. We also encourage viewers of the channel to actively express their opinions in the comments and support us with likes. For the first time, scientists started talking about the discovery of a new species of dinosaurs in 1924, when a group of scientists discovered a pair of shark-like teeth in Algeria. For several years, these teeth were attributed to one or another type of dinosaur. But in 1931, Ernst Stromer compared them with the remains found in 1914 in Egypt. As a result, he described a previously unknown lizard which received the name Carcodontosaurus. It could be translated as lizard with shark teeth. The subsequent study of all these finds became impossible due to their loss during the bombing of Berlin in 1944. The museum where all the samples were kept was destroyed. In subsequent years, many scientists attributed their findings to the remains of the Carcodontosaurus. But all these conclusions were wrong. The next real find of Carcodontosaurus bones was made only after more than 50 years. In 1995, an incomplete skull of this giant was discovered on the border of Morocco and Algeria. This skull has many similarities with the skull of the Gigantosaurus, which allowed scientists to draw conclusions about the relationship of these lizards. The main distinguishing feature of Carcodontosaurus is its serrated teeth up to 20 centimeters long. Paleontologist Paul Serino, who found this skull, estimated the length of the lizard's head at 1.6 meters. The total body length of the Carcodontosaurus could reach 10 to 12 meters, height at 4 meters, and weigh up to 8 tons. Such dimensions make this dinosaur one of the four largest predators in the history of the planet. This creature can be considered the largest predatory animal of the dinosaur era that lived on the territory of the African continent. Even such large sauropods as Titanosaurus could have been prey for Carcodontosaurus. At the same time, scientists believe that they hunted alone 
no evidence of flocking behavior was found in them. There's an opinion among scientists that the ancestor of the Carcodontosaurus that lived in the Cretaceous period could be the Allosaurus. Stromer, at the first description of the species, attributed it to a separate family. But a few years later, he also decided to classify Carcodontosaurus as part of the Allosaurid family. And after the discovery in 1995, this dinosaur was again retrained. Now, Carcodontosaurids are considered a separate family from the superfamily Allosaurids. But disputes about the origin of this entire family are still ongoing. The fact is that Allosaurus, which may be the ancestors of Carcodontosaurus, lived in North America. Their descendants, at best, could have moved to South America, where some of the Carcodontosaurids lived. The remains of other types of Allosaurus have been found on the territory of Tanzania and Portugal, and there's no clear evidence of the migration of the North American Allosaurus to places where Carcodontosaurus subsequently appeared. Also, many questions are related to the lifestyle and diet of the Carcodontosaurus. This discussion was further fueled by a 2011 illustration by artist Bob Nichols showing two Carcodontosauruses carrying the carcass of a juvenile rhinosaurus in their mouths. Researcher Donald Henderson modeled and calculated the weightlifting capabilities of these dinosaurs and concluded that the structure of the neck and jaws of the Carcodontosaurus did not allow him to lift loads weighing more than 424 kilograms. Other experiments showed that the maximum weight of his prey could not exceed 850 kilograms. That is, supporters of these theories believe that Carcodontosaurus hunted smaller dinosaurs and other creatures of that era. But the similarity of the structure of the teeth of this pangolin with the teeth of a modern white shark suggests that with their help, terrible bleeding wounds could be inflicted on prey. The predator could inflict swift bites on the victim and wait for her to become exhausted as a result of blood loss. This method of hunting does not require Carcodontosaurus to lift all prey from the ground. Even the largest dinosaur could be eaten after the predator waited in the wings and finished off the almost defenseless prey. It is believed that like all tauropods, Carcodontosaurus had excellent eyesight. The structure of his legs gives scientists reason to believe that this lizard ran at a speed of about 30 kilometers per hour. Also, some researchers believe that with such a mass and structure of the limbs, he could not stop quickly, and the fall of a four-ton body at high speed would inevitably lead to serious injuries. Carcodontosaurus inhabited almost the entire territory of North Africa. But in different parts of this considerable space, different species of both herbivorous and predatory creatures lived with him. In marshlands and mangrove forests of coastal regions, it could feed on a wide variety of herbivores. But, for example, the Chem Chem formation is quite poor for such production. Also, in almost all its habitats, the Carcodontosaurus experienced serious competition from other predatory theropods or crocodilomorphs. On one of the skulls found, there are even traces of Spinosaurus teeth. So, despite their impressive size and terrible teeth, Carcodontosaurus had to actively defend their claims to be the most terrible predators in Africa. But the family of Carcodontosaurids consisted of more than just one giant super predator. In other parts of the earth lived his smaller but no less dangerous relatives. Among them, there are several fairly well-known dinosaurs. It is considered one of the ancestors of the family. He lived in the late Jurassic period in what is now Portugal. Also, single finds of the remains of these species were made in China and Tanzania. These primitive shark-toothed lizards did not yet reach the size of their later relatives. Veteruprostosaurus This representative of the late Jurassic period is considered a direct descendant of the Lusovenator. But it is vastly superior in size. The length of this giant creature reached 10 meters. It is the earliest found Carcodontosaurid 
and its name can be translated as Old Shark Lizard. This species has already lived in Africa. Giganotosaurus This large member of the Carcodontosaurid family lived on the plains of modern Argentina about a hundred million years ago. According to researchers, it could weigh more than eight tons and grow in length more than 13 meters. Tyrannonotitan The remains of this species were also found in Argentina in 2005. He lived here a little about 10 to 20 million years earlier than the Giganotosaurus. With a body length of up to 12 meters and a height of up to 4 meters, the mass of this predator was about 5 tons. Mapusaurus Another representative of the Argentine branch of the family. He lived in this territory approximately 93 to 99 million years ago. According to researchers, Mapusaurus reached a length of 10.8 meters and a height of 4 meters. Their body was approximately 3.5 tons. Ulugbiksaurus This pangolin, first found on the territory of Uzbekistan in 1980, was described by a group of scientists only about a year ago. Its existence shows that Carcodontosaurids were widespread on the Asian continent as well. Scientists suggest that they lived there about 90 to 92 million years ago. The mass of this dinosaur was about 1 ton and the length was about 7.5 to 8 meters. Sharks are one of the most dangerous and deadly creatures that live in the seas and oceans. It seems that these predatory fish were created by evolution as ideal predators and their main purpose is a cruel massacre of other marine life. They are distinguished not only by their high speed, sharp teeth, and amazing sense of smell, but also sometimes simply by their huge size. It is difficult to imagine that a shark once reigned in the Earth's oceans, which was several times larger than any modern species. We are talking about megalodons. Today, we will tell you how the most terrible of all sharks lived and why it died out. By subscribing to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, you will be the first to know about the release of new videos and express your opinions about our work in the comments in the video. We also urge everyone who cares about the fate of our channel to support this video with a like. Until 1667, the teeth of ancient sharks, which were found in different parts of Europe, were mistaken for petrified tongues of snakes or dragons. But Nils Stenson, a Danish scientist, identified them as shark teeth. Among the teeth he described was the tooth of a creature that would later be called the Carcodon Megalodon. The researcher even tried to restore the appearance of that shark using a single tooth. The image of the monster's head made by him gained great popularity. But the giant shark received its current name only after almost 200 years. In 1835, Louis Agatsi placed Megalodon in the newly isolated genus Carcodon due to the resemblance of its teeth to those of the great white shark. Like all sharks, the megalodon had a cartilaginous structure and only its huge teeth and vertebrae have survived to this day. Comparing these details with the corresponding parts of modern sharks, scientists have tried to restore its approximate dimensions. According to various estimates, this giant could reach a length of about 17 to 20 meters and its estimated weight ranges from 12 to 50 tons. The largest tooth known to science is about 19 centimeters long. It was found in Peru and the second largest in South Carolina, USA. In general, the remains of megalodons are found almost all over the world from Australia to Northern Europe and from Japan to Italy. This suggests that the habitat of these creatures occupied most of the globe. Most likely, they dominated the seas and the oceans for millions of years and were not afraid of any competitors. It is believed that they appeared in the early Miocene around 28 million years ago and died out in the Pliocene era, which ended about 2.6 million years ago. It is previously believed that the reason for the disappearance of such a large creature was a change in climate and topography on the ocean floor 
which affected the decrease in water temperature in a certain part of it. But in recent years, there have been more and more opinions that the Megalodon either could not stand the competition with more adapted species or there was no longer enough food in the ocean for the greatly increased population of these animals. And if everything is more or less clear with climate change, then other versions of the extinction of the giant shark should be dealt with in more detail. Abrupt changes in the planet's climate have long been explained by the disappearance of many prehistoric animals, but during the Miocene period, the climate on the planet changed several times. At the same time, the growth of the Megalodon population continued. Perhaps those who argue in favor of other theories of the extinction of the Megalodon are somewhat right. In order to assess the possibility of Megalodon extinction for reasons independent of climate, it is necessary to understand what lifestyle this shark led. The behavior of animals is largely influenced by their size. For more than a hundred years, scientists have been trying to reliably reconstruct the size and appearance of the Megalodon. Based on this, it would be possible to compare its behavior with the lifestyle of modern sharks. The first attempts to restore the appearance of the Megalodon on the basis of the remains at the disposal of scientists were made at the beginning of the 20th century. With the advent of new data and the development of technology, the estimated size of the Megalodon has increased. It is now believed that the maximum size of an adult Megalodon could be 12 meters, the mass of such a predator could well exceed 45 tons. It is doubtful that with such a gigantic size, the Megalodon was able to develop great speed, pursuing prey. Therefore, most likely the predator used an ambush method. There are two opinions about how he managed to hunt successfully. The first method could be effective in attacking small cretaceans. The shark could simply ram its prey, breaking its bones. After such an attack, the prey ceased to resist and the predator could easily tear it apart and eat it. The second method could be used to attack larger representatives of the marine fauna. To completely immobilize the victim, the shark could first bite off its fins or tear out pieces of flesh. Having lost the ability to move, large whales became easy prey for the monster shark. If we compare the Megalodon with sharks that inhabit the seas and oceans today, then most likely its lifespan was about 40 years, although the polar shark can live up to 100 years. But the Megalodon lived in warmer waters. The main habitat of this ancient predator falls on the tropical or subtropical zones. Therefore, a deadline of 40 years is most likely. With such a gigantic size, the Megalodon had to have everything it could get to. Most likely, the basic diet was large fish and cretaceans. The strength of its bite, according to recent estimates, was about three times more powerful than the jaws of modern crocodiles. But because of the relatively short jaws, the shark could not completely swallow its prey. In order to eat it, the prey had to be torn to pieces at first. These powerful predators only had to be afraid of large tooth whales and Melville's leviathans. But at the end of the existence of megalodons, evolution gave rise to a new universal predator, the killer whale. These cetacins were significantly inferior to megalodons in size, but surpassed them in speed and mobility. In addition, killer whales lived and hunted in packs. It is believed that it was they who caused the disappearance of the giant shark. This hypothesis is rather controversial. Only competition with killer whales or the disappearance of food supply could not have caused such consequences. Other examples from the evolution of life on Earth shows that in the competition for a place under the sun, larger animals always win and the extinction of predators due to lack of food should be preceded by the gradual disappearance of all species that they could eat. And many of the victims of the Megalodon exist and thrive to this day. So the reason for the disappearance of the largest shark in history lies on something else. 
Even if all megalodons stopped having enough prey due to the appearance of killer whales, their population could have gradually been reduced. It can be assumed that these giant sharks began to attack their smaller and weaker relatives, but natural mechanisms are arranged in such a way that this is not capable of leading to the complete extinction of the species. But these processes could well become an addition to the climatic factor. Approximately the same fate befell the mammoths and other large ungulates of the Ice Age. Changing living conditions led to a reduction in the population, and more adapted predators completed the process of their extinction. True, statements are increasingly heard on the internet that the Megalodon exists to this day. Stories are given about yachts and ships destroyed by an unknown monster, in the skin of which huge teeth were stuck. Potents of this unconfirmed theory say that in search of more comfortable living conditions, this super predator decided to move to great depths where killer whales that breathe atmospheric air cannot reach. It is possible that soon we will be able to see a live Megalodon, which will decide to triumphantly return to the water's surface in order to again to become the most formidable marine predator. The most dangerous predators of the Ice Age If you believe that during the Ice Age, the entirety of the Earth's surface was covered in a layer of ice multiple meters thick, and that the only remaining living creatures were microorganisms thriving in the ocean around geothermal vents and the like, then you are definitely mistaken. Of course, these sorts of global catastrophes have taken place in Earth's history. The Age of Dinosaurs, for example, concluded this way. More predominantly, however, an ice age is understood as being a prolonged cooling of the global climate. Such periods are characterized by a regularly alternating pattern of abrupt cooling periods and so-called interglacial thaws. By the way, we are currently living through one of these warming trends. To learn more about various previous ice ages and the development of life on Earth, you can subscribe to our channel. Subscribers will be the first to find out about new videos and have the opportunity to express their opinions via like and comments. Following the change in temperature and movement in the polar ice, the animal habitat went through changes of their own. Life was barely hanging on around the equator, which then quickly spread towards polar latitudes. This contributed to an emergence of new species. During this current ice age, all kinds of animals appeared on the planet. Many of them, for numerous reasons, have gone extinct. Unfortunately, we're unlikely to see mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses once more grazing in the steppes of Siberia, and in place of grassy plains in these parts, we now find dense forests and snowy deserts. The mammoth fauna spawned not only a collection of peculiar herbivores, but also a huge number of predators which hunted them. Among the animals occupying the upper echelon of the food chain, many stood out from the rest for their unusual appearance and size. They are the main heroes of our video. Sabertooth Cats The sabertooth tiger is often called the representative of the sabertooth cats, or meharids. But in terms of kinship, these Ice Age predators are still closer to modern cats than the large felines of our time. The main features that distinguish sabertooth ancestors from their present-day descendants include a short tail and prominent fangs. In some species, these fangs could reach up to 17 centimeters, 7 inches, in length. These evolutionary adaptations aided the saber-toothed tigers in preying on various thick-skinned ungulates, such as deer, bison, and camels. Modern art, as depicted in Hollywood movies and cartoons, have created an iconic image in our collective mind of the saber-toothed tiger hunting mammoths. Scientists, however, have found this behavior to be an exception to the rule. After all, it is rather rare for modern large cats to go after adult elephants. Thus, it is believed that, most likely, Ice Age predators could attack a baby mammoth. The most infamous members of the saber-toothed family appear to be the Smilodon and the Homotherium. Smilodons inhabited territories spanning both Americas. They grew up to 1.2 meters 4 feet, at their withers and weighed in about 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. Homotherians were slightly smaller and lived throughout Africa and Eurasia as well as parts of North America. 
The last saber-toothed cats went extinct approximately 8 to 10,000 years ago. This means the last of their species competed for food amongst the lions, tigers, and jaguars we recognize today. Fororacos These large birds of prey inhabited nearly every continent, often in niches vacated by newly extinct dinosaurs. We know them by their common name Fororacos, but in fact, they were a facet of an entire family of winged hunters, which included various species. What they all possessed in common was an inability to fly, a large jaw size, powerful legs, and gigantic beaks. For several tens of millions of years, these terrifying birds were a menace for all other animals inhabiting the jungles of South America. Amphicean Amphicean, or dog bear, inhabited most of today's European nations. These strange and dangerous creatures shared features with various modern species. They possessed a long tail similar to modern cats, broad bear-like paws including claws that did not retract inward, and a canine skull equipped with powerful jaws. Amphiseans were most likely capable of relatively fast speeds, but scientists are inclined to believe that they favored ambushing prey. Judging by the largest remains discovered, the biggest canine bears weighed over 200 kilograms, or 440 pounds. Gigantic Bears In addition to canine bears, the ancestors of modern bears which are more similar to the beasts we're accustomed to also lived in Europe and North America. The distant ancestors of brown bears, Kodiaks, and grizzlies, however, were much larger than their descendants. For example, the Arctodus, or short-faced bear, could grow as large as a ton. Its body and muscle were much shorter than that of modern bears, and its paws were longer. This led scientists to speculate that despite such an enormous mass, these giants could run fast enough to catch prey. There's also speculation as to whether Arctodus might have stolen prey away from smaller cats, Smilodons and American lions. Cave bears received their namesake because their remains were found in mass in caves all across the European continent. In the Bear Cave, located in Romania, 140 skeletons of these large predators were discovered. Researchers determined these bears could grow as tall as 3.5 meters, or 11.5 feet. Entelodon These massive boars, which lived in both Eurasia and North America, inflicted terror on all other living things. Like their pig descendants, these infernal boars were not squeamish concerning food, and the combination of great weight, high speed, and a small brain made them dangerous even to the saber-toothed cats. Entelodons could hunt smaller animals or steal prey from other predators. Hyenodon Referring to a family of predators that appeared about 50 million years ago. Among them, there appeared animals as large as the modern fowl, but also real monsters weighing in at around 300 kilograms or 660 pounds and rising as high as 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall. The primary feature of the hyenodons was their huge head. Together with its jaws, it was about one-third the length of the animal's body. Simultaneously, these jaws were extremely powerful and filled with long, sharp teeth. Hyenodons could tear through the hardest bones. This meant they could hunt both herbivores and feed on carrion alike. With an impressive arsenal of traits and more than likely a gregarious hunting method, hyenodons could seriously compete with big cats and giant bears. But for 15 million years, these predators have been completely extinct. Scientists pose it that by evolving such large jaws, hyenodons were unable to compensate to provide a large enough brain. Additionally, most ungulates of their time began shifting escape tactics and favoring speed. The massive, yet unintelligent hyenodons did not evolve their traits and hunting tactics in time to survive. Dire Wolf it turns out that the dire wolves which populate the expanse of George Martin's Game of Thrones universe are not merely a figment of the writer's imagination. The largest wolves ever to exist found their home in North America. They were comparable in height to modern gray wolves, but weighed more and were built larger. Like all other members of this family, dire wolves lived and hunted in packs. Therefore, in a struggle for prey and territory, they could throw their weight against any of the contemporaneous predators. The most terrifying predator of all this era, however, was a creature boasting small size and lacking large teeth and jaws. 
This dangerous beast not only preyed upon large herbivores, such as the mammoth, but was also willing to engage in combat with all the aforementioned creatures. According to most scientists, it was this animal's insatiable appetite that caused the extinction of many species of that era. This animal was man, and their main weapons were a developed brain and the tools this brain helped them create. Thanks to this, man has survived many more formidable predators and successfully lives on to the present day, occupying the highest order of the food chain. But the next round of climate change is not far off. Scientists predict another global cooling period over the next hundred years. Only time will tell whether our descendants will successfully reign over the world when the ice caps recede from the equator to the poles once again. How Dinosaurs Came to Rule the Earth We're all well aware of the fact that millions of years ago, our planet was inhabited by giant lizards, the majority of whom scientists have named the dinosaurs. They dominated the land, water, and skies, all the while the distant ancestors to mammals never considered challenging these true masters of the Earth. But thanks to dinosaurs going extinct, those small, wool-covered creatures had a chance to develop and thrive. Incidentally, the dinosaurs themselves replaced some taxa along the evolutionary path, occupying lived-in niches. So what helped these giant lizards get so far up the evolutionary ladder? And why did they dominate the Earth for a long time? The age of dinosaurs was preceded by the aptly named Paleozoic Era, which had lasted nearly 300 million years. During this time, the Earth's climate changed more than once, seas appeared and dried up, and most importantly, thousands of diverse species of living organisms came about and then disappeared. Many animals in this epoch were on par with the dinosaur's size, lifestyle, strength, and voraciousness. At the same time, one could still find rather bizarre and unusual forms of life among them. One of the most interesting species in modern scientists' opinion is the Cynoganthus, who lived at the end of the Paleozoic era. With its hair cover, a three-foot-long body, sharp teeth, and remote resemblance to modern dogs, it's probable this predator was an ancestor of modern mammals. Another ancestor of modern mammals is thought to be the Estemonosuchus. On the outside, this strange creature resembled a cross between a hippopotamus and a rhinoceros with a collar much like a triceratops. To this day, scientists debate whether Estemonosuchus was a herbivore or a carnivore. It reached about 15 feet and weighed nearly half a ton. The marine fauna of the Paleozoic era evolved from trilobites and crustaceans to the ancestors of modern fish. Their evolution, however, often took on strange and even creepy forms. One of the most interesting of such surprises was the species of fish called Helicoprion. Despite their outward resemblance to modern sharks, they are not even remotely related. These giants could reach up to 40 feet in length. The strangest thing, though, was their jaw structure straight out of a horror movie. Their mandibles had the ability to rotate like a circular saw. Another sea giant during this era was the Dunkleoste. This 33-foot weighed around 4 tons and was covered in thick, bone armor. It is thought that its diet was made up of prehistoric sharks, the likes of which the Dunkleoste could bite in half with its powerful jaws. According to researchers, the pressure created by these jaws is comparable to a modern crocodile's or T-Rex. About 250 million years ago, the Permian extinction began, and it's considered the most massive extinction in the history of the planet. The oxygen content in the air and water sharply decreased, the air temperature rose sharply at the end of the beginning of the event, and then a severe cooling followed thereafter. All of these cataclysms led to a painful, slow extinction of nearly all life on the planet over a period of 5 to 15 million years. The ancestors of mammals degenerated to the size of modern rodents and tunneled into burrows. A group of several hundred species of lizards who would one day become dinosaurs were the most successful at adapting to the new climate. The Mesozoic Era, which succeeded the Permian extinction, was the heyday of dinosaurs. During the 200 million years it lasted, Hundreds of species of the most diverse creatures replaced one another all over the globe. Like all animals that existed before and after the dinosaurs, 
They were divided into carnivores and herbivores, large and small, and between nocturnal and daytime predators. Each species adapted to new conditions in their surroundings the best they could, which is why evolution provided us with a gigantic array of these reptiles. Undoubtedly, the most popular and recognizable of these dinosaurs was the T-Rex. Due to its large size and terrifying teeth, it was able to gain fame as the most formidable predator of all time. And even though there is an ongoing debate among scientists as to whether it was an ambush hunter or could actually run after its prey, considering its size like in Hollywood movies. But maybe it was a scavenger after all. When we say dinosaur, most of us imagine the T-Rex. One of the most intelligent species of dinosaurs was the Trudon. These small nocturnal predators had the largest brains relative to their body size. Until recently, there was even a theory that the evolution of the Trudon led to the emergence of humans. However, this hypothesis was found to be false. Among the herbivore species, the most well-known members of the family were the sauropods. These long-necked giants reached a mass of 100 tons and rarely feared even the largest of predators. Monsters such as the Mosasaurus or giant shark the Megalodon could have easily handled the Diplodocus or Argentinosaurus. But because of their different habitats, these varied species rarely came across one another's paths. However, in the seas of the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, these super predators had no competitors. Sea lizards, Mosasaurs were 33 to 56 feet long and could reach speeds of nearly 12 miles per hour. Combined with their huge jaws equipped with sharp teeth, few people would be able to put up a fight against these monsters. It is true that there are findings of giant turtle shells with traces of Mosasaurs' unsuccessful bites. The extinction of the dinosaurs is believed to have begun when a giant asteroid collided with the Earth. Its contact led to a drastic change in climate, as well as a large number of eruptions and earthquakes. In turn, these events led to a large amount of dust and volcanic ash, which rose into the air and prevented sunlight from reaching the Earth's surface. Despite the fact that dinosaurs are considered to be warm-blooded by modern science, only a few species managed to cope with subsequent cold snap and food scarcity. Perhaps if the falling meteorite had split into several smaller chunks or had merely dropped into the rough ocean, the scale of ecological destruction wouldn't have been so critical for dinosaurs and their distant descendants could still be living on Earth. On the other hand, however, the dinosaurs' extinction enabled the development of mammals and, as a consequence, the emergence of humanity. Thus, if dinosaurs had survived, it's unlikely we would have been able to observe them living, as we ourselves would most likely have never existed. One more thing. According to some theories, life was brought to Earth from outer space. There's also the theory that small fragments of our planet, some which contain life, could have been carried away to other galaxies following the asteroid's impact. Therefore, it's possible that somewhere in space, there's an intelligent race of lizards that evolved from our dinosaurs. On our planet, though, only crocodiles, sharks, turtles, a handful of insects, and a few other living species who witnessed the dinosaurs have survived. And the only officially recognized descendants of said dinosaurs are modern birds. So, if you want to see living dinosaurs, you can go to a chicken farm or feed pigeons in the park. After all, it's quite possible that even without asteroids, dinosaurs would have just evolved into something similar in due time. What if humans ended up in the age of dinosaurs? Human time travel is a typical plot for fantasy novels and movies. The heroes of these works, however, usually find themselves in an era in which some semblance of human society exists. We have many examples in fiction of the adventures of our present-day people in the time of Wild West, the Middle Ages, and even the Stone Age. But not every author dares to take his character hundreds of millions of years back in time to the age of dinosaurs. It's difficult enough to properly describe the nature and living conditions of anyone who somehow incomprehensibly got thrown into a world inhabited by giant reptiles. After all, apart from dinosaurs and other animals, people have to deal with a huge number of nuanced inconveniences, ranging from a different atmospheric composition of climatic conditions and the absence of edible fruits and familiar plants. 
Learn more about the real flora and fauna of the Age of Dinosaurs in other videos on our channel. By subscribing, you can be the first to hear about new videos. With the help of likes and comments, any viewer can share their opinions of topics covered in our videos. More often than not, fiction writers place dinosaurs in the conditions that humans are accustomed to. This usually takes place in a remote corner of an unexplored continent, like Conan Doyle in The Lost World, or a small island in the middle of the ocean, like Spielberg in Jurassic Park. But in these cases, there was only one serious danger to humans – the dinosaurs themselves. Not only could these reptiles end up hostile should one intentionally or accidentally end up in the age of dinosaurs, but the entire environment would be alien to human beings. Most likely, an accidental hitchhiker wouldn't even last a few days alone amidst dinosaurs. But a trained group of specialists could not only survive in those alien conditions, but also exist safely in this new world. The first problem to be solved concerning the preparation of such an expedition would be the differing gas composition of the planet's atmosphere. Particularly, during the apex of the dinosaurs' domination, there was significantly less oxygen in the air. It is known that a lack of oxygen can cause a diverse set of consequences. Therefore, the best solution a scientific expedition could take is to bring their own oxygen tanks, with a mixture of gases more familiar to human lungs. Living in workspaces, in this case, would have to be made airtight and make use of appropriate equipment. It's possible the human body's reaction to the dinosaur's atmosphere wouldn't be so threatening, but it's better to be sure. The lack of familiar food won't be any less of a problem. In the age of dinosaurs, not only were there no fruits that humans would be accustomed to, but the trees on which this fruit might hang were absent as well. Naturally, we could try catching food by hunting or fishing, but the ancestors of fish that were evolving during that time were much larger than their present-day descendants and didn't mind feasting on smaller animals that might wander into the water. In the event of a prearranged expedition, the problem of food might not be so pronounced. Firstly, any such group would be provided a sufficient amount of food. There would be a balanced menu, allowing explorers to engage in specific work rather than fret constantly over food. There would also be teams of hunters and fishermen equipment with the knowledge of pursuing local animals without putting their own lives at risk. Undoubtedly, when preparing for long expeditions into the age of dinosaurs, people should bring with them not only a supply of provisions, but also seeds from a modern agricultural produce. Thus, within a few years a small colony would be able to support itself independently. A lot will also depend on the place where the supposed time traveler might end up. Some scientists believe that the most dangerous place on Earth during the era of dinosaurs was the area now referred to as the modern Sahara Desert. It's difficult regardless for an untrained human to survive in any wilderness alone. There's no need to travel anywhere in time to demonstrate that. The modern taiga, the African savanna, or the circumpolar regions are no less dangerous, and the prospect of being eaten by a lion or a bear is no different than dying at the teeth of a Tyrannosaurus. In various parts of the modern Earth, one might also face problems with the climate, finding water and nourishment. Surviving in the Sahara now without equipment is almost impossible, despite its lack of tropical forests inhabited by giant lizards. Finally, let's head to the planetary masters of that era the dinosaurs. When discussing time traveling to the age of dinosaurs, many people merely imagine adventures to the theme of Jurassic Park movies, where a T-Rex or a Spinosaurus lurks behind every tree. But the laws of nature are unchanging, and they apply just as much then as they do now. The larger the predator, the larger its hunting territory. In the case of large theropods, their territory probably occupied more than an entire square kilometer. Therefore, the probability of encountering the king of beasts as a human being who is of no interest to him as prey wouldn't be very high. As we've already discussed, human beings just wouldn't have been considered food by these large predators. The objective in their hunts was large herbivores. Humans would have needed to handle some animal in their own weight class. Don't think that all reptiles of the time were the size of a truck. Giant dinosaurs were thought to make up only 5% of the total population. The forests in the age of dinosaurs were inhabited by a large number of small lizards. Many of them would have posed little danger to humans. Their main concern was not becoming someone else's dinner, nor would they lively have perceived humans as a threat.
The hunting grounds of the modern Amur tiger may exceed 100 square kilometers. The size depends on the amount of prey in the area. Most likely, the Tyrannosaurus and other large predators of the age of dinosaurs occupied a comparable area in which to hunt. There's a good chance that a single man who might end up in that era wouldn't encounter a single T-Rex in his vicinity. Thus, if the issue of reduced oxygen content and the lack of habitual food were solved, it would be quite possible for humans to live alongside the dinosaurs, and a well-armed and prepared group could do it with relative comfort. With weapons, equipment, transport and building materials, even in the age of dinosaurs, a human could end up the master of the planet. A single person, however, even the most trained individual, would be unlikely to play Robinson for long. Though this applies not only in time travel fantasies, but also in getting through extreme conditions on an otherwise habitable and fairly safe Earth in our present time. Surviving alone in the desert of the taiga, the jungle, or the far north is a difficult and dangerous undertaking even without dinosaurs around. We thank you for watching this video till the end. If you're interested in more details about life on Earth at the time of the dinosaurs, we recommend you check out other materials uploaded to our channel.